Jack, you've uh, definitely painted the macro picture for us and certainly the money is being spent, as you say. How does that translate when it comes to the equity markets? I mean, the CSI 300 index had a better month, uh, certainly in May, as investors and certainly foreign investors seem to be piling back into Chinese stocks and certainly betting on those stimulus hopes, as you say, and these reopenings. But, I mean, how sustainable really is this and in terms of the momentum? And, I mean, what are investors really looking for now in order to see a sort of more meaningful rebound? Mm. Well, I mean, the rebound have really started in the last one month for China, right? The market outperformed U.S. equities by almost 10 percent, depends on the dates you pick in calculating performance. And the inflow is only at the beginning, in my view, because many investors, I guess, around the world are underweight China. Um, the outflow that lasted for some 12 to 15 months suggest that foreign investors are very underexposed. With China being outperforming U.S. equity markets almost 10% in the last one month, there's a lot of catch-up investors need to do in order to get back to neutral positioning. But going forward, the stimulus measures will be the key on where the investors will be placing the money in China. It will be those infrastructure sectors. It will be those uh, internet-related sectors that will be getting most of the money. And more importantly, not only the foreign investors are coming back uh, in the Chinese markets, we're noticing in the onshore markets, uh, people are, I mean, the sentiment is beginning to recover. Uh, and we see that mutual fund unit creation have started to rise. Uh, southbound inflow from, I guess, onshore investors have started to rise. And both sides of investors are beginning to power up back the position on China equities. While sentiment, obviously, when you speak to people, are still a little bit fragile, but there is yeah. more willingness to start placing money into play. And there's a lot of room for people to put money back to where it should be at a neutral allocation. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned those inter internet stocks, Jack, of course, uh, part of this story is, well, the big part of this story is certainly the, the, the consumer. When it comes to some of those big tech stocks, uh, how, where does that leave the investment strategy uh, with some of those names, given that not only do you have this reopening, but you've also got the issue of the ADRs? Where do you think they'll go in terms of these negotiations on the, the auditing rules, but also some of Liu He's comments? How do you read into to that with regards to the tech crackdown and where that's at? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the ADR and the auditing rules, um, obviously there's progress, but at the same time, we're getting too close to the deadline when uh, some of these companies will have to submit all the reports to satisfy the SEC. Uh, but then we'll, what we have to focus on is you cannot guess what the outcome should be. We should just be positioning in the Hong Kong listed shares in order to avoid that regulatory risk. And secondly, um, in terms of the regulatory crackdown, uh, we do think that we are coming at the end, or at least a pause, of the regulatory crackdown that's already been announced by the State Council in the last one month or two. And what we need to see going forward is, is more confirmation and details on how they're going to execute a pause of the regulatory crackdown. They said it. Some of the companies recognize what they said. So now let's see what the details are. And once they are released, I think that will be a further positive catalyst for the sector. And that will leave us with more further upside in related equities and the Hang Seng Tech Index.